What's up, y'all? PDT here with another car video. Car video. <laughs> I'm trying to make sure I get in the light because I know I'm looking kind of dark. I know it's a little bit hard to see me. So I'll try to get up close to the light as I can. And it's time for No More Genies, number 32. And the prophetic topic tonight is new hope. Now, I want to remind you what, um, I want to remind you what uh, No More Genies is about. No More Genies is about getting rid of our genie or magic concept of God and listening and reading to what the word really says, because the word of God is always the sure word of prophecy and listening to what the spirit is saying to the church, what the Holy Ghost is saying, okay? So instead of, <clears throat> because it would be a shame to come through 2020 and not learn any of the lessons from it, but I'll get to that in a minute. Let's have a word of prayer. So thank you, Lord, for tonight. Thank you, Lord, for instant access to your presence where we stand uh, in your grace by faith where the wrath of God against sin is already burned with justified in Christ. Oh God, thank you for chastisement. Thank you for correction, because you said those are signs of your love. Thank you, oh God, for understanding. Thank you for your mercy and your patience and your willingness to stay with us to help us uh, get our eyes open so we can understand what, what you are saying and what you require of us, oh God. So I just wanna bless your name just for making it through 2020. Thank you for this first broadcast of 2021. Uh, no more genies, oh God, where we're going to move away from all that crazy religion, all those crazy myths, all that stuff that we heard and listen to what you actually say in the scriptures, which is the sure word of prophecy and what you say through the Holy Ghost. Thank you for it. We believe you for it. I surrender right now. God, I die to myself, not my will, but thine be done. So you breathe through me and you speak through me tonight and you say what you want said according to your divine purpose. And thank you for the opportunity and the privilege of being used by you. I thank you for it and I believe you for it in Jesus' name, amen. All right. Still got some people in my uh, in my group coming over uh, because I always let people know when I'm coming on live, which is why you need to be a part of my uh, newsletter list and you need to, here's my sister. Uh, I'm sure my son is watching. So you need to, be, need to be a part of all that. So you should get notifications when I'm live on Facebook. But if not, I always let, again, my group know so they can catch me when I'm live. So today's No More Genies is I'm trying to stay here in the light because I know it's hard to see because I'm doing a car video. So I know it's hard to see me, but here's my big old nose. So today's, tonight's No More Genies, uh, the Lord gave me a very specific Word of prophecy, and of course, there's always a scripture reference, and I'm really excited about it because it blessed my heart as he was giving it to me. So first, I'm going to read the scripture, and then I'm going to let the prophetic word flow that the Lord showed me. So here's the scripture. The scripture is in Psalm 77, Psalm, right in the middle of the Bible, book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 77, and we're going to read verses seven through, I'll say 11. So Psalms chapter 77 verses seven through 11. We're gonna read that and then I'm gonna release the prophetic word the Lord gave me based on those scriptures, okay? Here we go. And I'm reading out of the authorized King James version. Will the Lord cast off forever and will he be favorable no more? Verse eight, is his mercy clean gone forever? Doth his promise fail forevermore? Verse nine, hath God forgotten to be gracious? Hath he in anger shut up his tender mercy, Salah? Verse 10, and I said, this is my infirmity, but I will remember the years of the right hand of the most high. And verse 11, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. I'm going to put that in the chat. 
So look in the chat and you'll see those, the scripture reference for those verses I just read. Okay. Psalm 77, chapter 77, verses 7 through 11. Now, this is the word uh, that the Lord gave me. You can see from the title that the title is New Hope. So I'm going to let it flow like the Holy Ghost gave it to me. For the Lord is saying to his people that is his mercy clean gone? Is he going to stay angry forever? No, he's not. The Lord says that he wants us to take the right lessons out of 2020. And he said, for those that learned a new level of precision obedience, you learn to obey me in a way that you never have before. You learn to trust me in very trying times because anybody can trust me or say they trust me when times are going well. But what is your response in trying times? You learn to receive my discipline and my chastisement and my correction where there were things you were doing I was not pleased with that were not productive. <clears throat> and when you learn, for those of you that learned the precision obedience, you have now learned to trust me in areas you have never trusted me in before, like new levels of finances, new levels of relationships, new levels of health and healing. Because everything that we thought was anchored was toe up in 2020. And the Lord says it was not all in vain. But for those of you that learned precision obedience, those of you that learned to obey me in 2020, in hard times and dark times, I'm going to reward you. It was not in vain. I'm going to reward you in the days to come with specific instructions because you learn how to move when I tell you to move. You learn how to do what I told you to do in the dark times. That's what those times were for. So I'm not going to stay angry forever. I'm not going to discipline and chastise forever, but rather for those that learn the lessons, I'm going to show you new things specifically like real estate investments, like stock investments, like new properties, like new relationships, like new ideas, new inspirations, new revelation, new visions. I'm going to show you some new stuff because now you've learned my voice and now you've learned how to obey. When I tell you to do something, you learn how to do it and to cast down your plan and listen to my plan. And I'm going to reward you because I want my people to have hope. I want you to know that everything that happened in 2020 wasn't just for nothing. <clears throat> and here's the reason why, says the Lord. Because I am always operating on multiple levels that you wouldn't understand even if I explained it to you. From my perspective, says the Lord, there are always many, many pieces on the chessboard. There are countries, there are nations, there are families, there are neighborhoods, there are churches, there are political systems, there are financial systems, there are food and health systems. And I'm looking at it all, all the time. And I'm orchestrating things for people that haven't been born yet. Think about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and then how I got Joseph ready to save Jacob's life towards the end of his years. And all that was a precursor to Moses. And that happened over the course of four or 500 years, says the Lord. So I'm always, always dealing and operating on levels that I could not make you understand, even if I showed it to you. That's why I need you to trust me, even when you can't trace me, even when you don't understand what I'm doing. Even if you don't understand my commandments, I need you to trust me and do what I'm telling you to do because there's more in play than just you. There's more in play than just your life. There are people that haven't been born yet. Like Moses was not born at the time of Joseph, but I was getting Israel ready to become a great nation before Moses even came on the scene. So trust me, hear me, believe me and obey me. And I'm going to reward you for that new level of precision obedience in 2021 and the days to come, says the spirit of the living God. So what does that mean? And let's look at the scripture. What that means is that sometimes during dark times, they make you miss the good times and they make you miss the days of God's mercy when God's whip is on you when God's judgment is on you, 
when God's chastisement is on you. And when people are dying left and right and everything's shutting down, when the Lord has visited the land with his judgment because he's not pleased with what he saw. But the Bible says, even in the midst of that, his mercy is not clean, gone forever. God is not going to forget to have mercy. But as he explained in the prophetic word, during that time, he's working some things in our lives. Verse 9 says, have God forgotten to be gracious? Have he in anger shut up his tender mercies? But verse 10 says, I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. In other words, we had a year of the left hand of judgment. <laughs> That's what 2020 was was the left hand of judgment. But uh, Asaph here says he's going to remember. Oh, my Lord, my lights went out. Got to recharge him. Asaph, Asaph said he's going to remember the years of the right hand of judgment, that the years where we had prosperity, the years where everything was plentiful, the years where, you know, we didn't have to wear masks, and the years where entertainment and movie theaters, all that, remember how when prosperity was in the land. We should remember the works of the Lord and remember the wonders of old. So what that means is that that's coming back on some level. It's never going to be like it was. But what the Lord is saying for 2021 and this year is that he's orchestrating some very specific things. And some things come in very small windows. And God can't have us arguing with him when he's open a three-day window for a blessing. And you got an attitude and you're disobedient and rebellious, and then you don't move when God tells you to move, then you're going to miss that blessing. That's what that means. But now, since we have survived the left hand of God, the judgment of God, the chastisement of God, the correction of God, since we survived all that, now we're in a position to hear him and believe him and obey him so that when these very specific blessings come, he can guide us into them because we've learned precision obedience. Amen? Amen. That is the best news I've heard. <laughs> the 2021 came in that the Lord is offering new hope, that the Lord hasn't forgotten his mercy forever. It's not gone forever. That even if we go through a season of chastisement and judgment and correction, that God is going to reward us. But here's something else the Lord told me prophetically. And listen to this carefully. He said, this is just for people that have learned their lessons and have learned how to obey. You understand what that means? That means for people that are still doing their own thing and people that are still running their own program and people that are still walking in disobedience, they're not going to get this new level of blessing. And that's something that you need to understand, that you need to stop thinking that this is a magic genie thing where God just waves his hand and just... Everybody gets the same everything. It doesn't work that way. His blessings are for the faithful. His blessings are for the believing. His blessings are for the obedient. And that's what 2020 was about. And again, I will repeat, it would be the biggest shame and tragedy in the world to go through all of that and not learn anything. To go through all of that and not learn the lessons that God wanted us to learn from that experience. And to repeat, what the Lord wanted us to learn was precision obedience. What the Lord wanted us to do was to receive his chastisement, his judgment, his correction. Because remember, I told you, Revelation 2 and 3 is where the Lord gives us our grades. Revelation 2 and 3 is where the Lord is showing us one of his functions in heaven as our high priest and as our king. That the great king looks down on what we're doing and says, I like this, 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 and this. But I don't like this, 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 and this. You need to repent of this. You need to fix this. You need to address this. That's what Revelation chapters 2 and 3 are about. That's why you hear me reference them all the time. Okay? So, again, to repeat, the lessons of 2020 were judgment, chastisement, correction, conviction. But the Lord says that for those of us that listen to him and learn how to obey him on those levels. Because what if God tells you to buy a stock? And that stock is only going to be at that attractive price for three days. And you've got an attitude. You don't know how to move when God tells you to move. You're going to miss that. What if God tells you to buy a piece of property? What if God tells you to start a business in the middle of June? Don't start it in March and don't start it in August. What if God says the second week of June, drop this business? You have to have precision obedience. You have to have been disciplined and trained to obey Jesus on that level 
so that you can get in line with what he's doing. Because for far too long, people have preached and taught that that seeds are are just kind of general. And me and my son talk about it all the time about some, some people get on and say, God said it's harvest time. It ain't harvest time all the time. (laughs) It ain't harvest time all the time. That's not possible. Okay. It's not possible that it's harvest time all the time. Okay. Sometimes it's seed time. Sometimes it's winter time where the earth is resting, where the leaves have fallen from the trees and it's cold and it's snow on the ground and the earth is cold and the earth is resting. Okay. Then spring comes back around again, time to plant. And then you have a, a harvest in summer and then you gather in the fall, you know, and then you have stored up for winter. So you can't be listening <laughs> To these so-called spiritual leaders, that's every time they get up, they say, God says it's harvest time. Uh, you got to get a sure word of prophecy. And what that means is if the Lord told you a particular harvest is going to happen at a particular time for you, then go with that. But stay in step with what he's doing. Stay in step with what he's doing. Just because God told this person to sow at this time doesn't mean it's time for you to sow. Do what the Lord is telling you to do so you can stay in step with him. Because as he revealed through that prophetic word, <clears throat> there's more going on than we can ever understand. And that's why we have to be in sync and in season. Because some things only come around once in life. Let me put my, my one finger up. Some things only come around once in life. And so many messages have been preached about how God is a God of second chances. That's true about how God is a God of many second chances. That's true. But God is also a God of one time gift. That's a message that has not been preached. That some gifts are only going to happen once in your life. And if you don't know how to value them, if you don't know how to discern them, you're going to spend them, you're going to squander them. And then you're going to end up like Esau. You're going to have given away your birthright. And you ain't going to never get it back. And you're going to spend the rest of your life regretting things that you gave up that you should have held on to and valued when you had them. And it is so, you, you make life so much harder than it has to be when no one teaches you how to discern the times and the seasons. It, like the difference between having a baby at 25 versus having a baby at 75. A man can father a child at 25 and a man can father a child at 75. We know that because uh, Abraham had Ishmael around 84, 85 years old. But it's not the same season of life (laughs) for you to be running around with your little kids in your 20s versus running around with little kids in your 70s or your 80s. You see what I mean? It's not the same. It's not the same. is not the same. And that's where people have gotten confused. And that's why I started my No More Genies broadcast. That's where people have gotten confused because they have preached and taught that it doesn't matter when stuff happens and and God's going to do it and all this. And it conveyed the idea that it didn't matter what we do. And that's not true. That is not true. What if God is leading you to go back to school, but God says, do not go in the winter semester Do not go in the summer semester, but enroll in the fall. God says, get back in school in August, September of this year, because God knows they're going to be offering discounts on tuition. So if you've gone back to school in January, or if you've gone back to school in May or June, you would have paid twice the money. But because you listened to the Lord and went back to school in September, like he told you, now you have a tuition that's maybe a third, maybe even a quarter of what it would have been. Stuff like that. That's what I mean. That's what I mean, because God is a person, not a set of rules. And when you get out of sync with him, there are certain blessings you're supposed to have and certain things you're supposed to be walking in and certain things he's doing. And he don't conform his purpose to our schedule. We need to learn how to be obedient so we can conform our choices to his schedule. As the Lord said in the book of Acts, It is not for us to know the times and the seasons that the father has put in his own power. But as God said in Amos, surely the Lord God will do nothing unless he first tell his servants, the prophets. So on the one hand, the scriptures tell us that there's a whole 
blueprint. There's a whole matrix. There's a whole schematic in heaven before God that we ain't gonna never see because it's not for us to know because we can handle it even if we did see it. But in Amos, he tells us that when I get ready to move on something, when something gets ready to happen, God said, I'm gonna tell the prophets. That's why you need the prophetic in your life. That's why you need to listen to a proven prophet whose words come to pass because they're speaking by the Holy Ghost and not off the top of their head. And that's why you need to learn how to stay in step with God in sync and in season and stop assuming that God is just going to arbitrarily bless you no matter what you do. Let me say that one more time. Stop assuming that God is just going to arbitrarily bless you no matter what you do. Because in Revelation 2 and 3, the Lord is very clear. He says there are some things he's pleased with when he looks at the church, and there are some things he's not pleased with. And he says to the first church, if you don't repent and come back to where you need to be, I'm going to remove your candlestick. What does that mean? The Lord means I'm going to take your light out of the world. Why do you think so many churches wither and die? Why do you think so many churches fold up? Why do you think so many churches at one point, they're like the hot church, they're like the place to be, they're like the, the it church, and then in just a few years, you don't hear from them no more. Why do you think that is? Because it's not about you. It's not about being famous. It's not about how many people agree. It's not about that. It's about doing what the Lord says, when the Lord says, how the Lord says. That's what he's looking for. And that's what 2020 was about. All right. So amen and amen. That blessed my heart. And when the Holy Spirit gave me that, that just a message of hope, because when it looks like things are going to be bleak all the time, when it looks like there's just darkness, when it looks like there's no way out, that gets to you. That can be really depressing. But the Holy Spirit was saying what the scripture says that even when God is angry, even when God is judging, even when God is chastising, he's not going to forget his mercy forever. He's not going to stay mad forever. He's not going to keep the belt on you forever. But you must liken it to your natural father or grandfather. If your natural father or your grandfather chastises you or rebukes you, what they want you to do is learn the lesson. Uh, let me give you a practical example. If you're uh, playing in the basement with your cousins and your siblings and Pop Pop yells down in the basement, y'all can't stop making all that noise. Y'all too loud. Pop Pop ain't gonna say that but one time. And if y'all keep cutting up and getting all loud and doing it, Pop Pop coming down in that basement with the belt or the broom or something, he ain't gonna be talking then. He coming down with judgment. And after he chastises what Pop Pop wants you to do, he doesn't want to have to keep whipping you. That wasn't the point of the whooping. He wants you to learn how to play together and not make all that noise, not be so loud so you don't disturb the adults upstairs. Do you understand that? Well, it's the same way with Father God. The whipping is not the point. The point of the whipping is learn your lesson. When I tell you to stop doing something, stop. When I tell you to start, do start. When I tell you to go, go. When I tell you to sit, sit. That's that's the point. So my brothers and sisters, I'm I'm working on my heart so that I can do exactly that because I don't want to go through. Uh, I don't want to go through nothing like that again. I don't want to go through what these months have been. I want to go through that again. I want to learn my lesson. And so what that means is that you got to start praying in small details. You got to you got to surrender every day to the Lord. You got to give the Lord every day. You got to give the Lord every hour. Like, Lord, this is what I would like to accomplish today. This is what I would like to accomplish this week. But you tell me what you want. Okay, this project I have going on, God, should I do that this year? Or should I back burner that until next year? This this investment I want to make, this this trip I wanted to take, even with the pandemic, this business I wanted to start, whatever it is I want to do, God, you tell me when to do that. Or if at all, maybe I should just drop it. Maybe that thing that I want to do is not the thing to do at all. So not my will, but thine be done. That was the point of 2020. Now, remember, the prophetic word is to those that learn to obey. Not everybody. Because I can guarantee, oh Lord, I can guarantee you 
there are going to be some Christians and there are going to be some people that didn't learn anything from 2020. I'm going to say that one more time. There's going to be some Christians and there's going to be some people that didn't learn anything from 2020. That means that 2021 is not going to be better for them. It might, in fact, be worse. Well, I do not want to be one of those Christians. I do not want to be one of those people. I want to be one of those people that learn my lesson so I can move forward in precision obedience with Christ. Okay? All right. Amen and amen. Let me ask the Lord if there's anything else he wants me to say. Okay. What the Holy Ghost said was, look for me to speak to you specifically in the days to come. What that means is that God is going to start getting really specific about his instructions. And he wants us to tune our ears to the very specific things he's saying. All right. Amen. Amen. Well, that blessed my heart. I hope that blessed your heart. So this is my first No More Genies for 2021 because we, we got to get rid of that genie concept of God. No more of that. No more of that old religious stuff. God took his hand in 2020 and tore all that down. And most of us can't even go to church no more except online. The old thing is gone. So it's about obeying God in, with precision and specificity in the days to come. Okay? Amen, amen. Thank you for watching me live. And uh, I'm eventually going to get this on YouTube as well. I will be back this Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, for my a live prophetic word. And that's going to be my, my first one for 2021. So that's going to be this Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time for the weekly live prophetic word. All right. Uh, now, remember, I told you <clears throat> that uh, my goal for this year is to increase my reach. And the reason I want to increase my reach is because as the Lord gives me prophetic words, when the Lord releases anything prophetic, we want as many people as possible to hear it so that they can get the blessing from it. Because signs, wonders, and miracles always follow those that believe and obey the word of God, the written word of God and the prophetic word of God. If you hear the voice of God and you believe it and obey it, there will be a sign, a wonder and a miracle that will follow that obedience. So my goal for 2021 is to increase my reach. I want as many people as possible to hear what God is breathing out through me. So every video, I'm going to ask you to do one thing because I cannot increase my reach uh, by myself. So every video, I'm going to ask you to do one thing. So here's the one thing I want you to do in this video. On my Facebook page, Prophet David Taylor, there's a little button that says sign up. Uh, that's my newsletter. So sign up for my newsletter because I have so much content on my YouTube channel and then I have my music. I have a bunch of things that are not on my Facebook page. So I want to be sure that you have an opportunity to check out all my ministry materials. So if you haven't done so already, go to the little button that says sign up. It's right on top of my banner on my Facebook page. Click that button, fill in your name and email address. There will be no spam because I hate spam. I don't send people spam. I'm going to send you a newsletter once a week so you can understand uh, all the material that I'm offering from my music to my prophetic wisdom videos to my weekly live prophetic word, to no more genies, to my prophetic demo devotional, all the stuff I have, that stuff is in my newsletter. So go ahead on and sign up there. That's the one thing I want you to do in this video. <clears throat> and in every video, I'm going to be striving to increase my reach and I can't do it by myself. So I'm gonna ask you to do one thing and that's the one thing for this video, okay? All right, amen and God bless. I will see you Sunday and remember that uh, the Lord's mercy is not gone forever, but it's time for some new hope as we obey him with precision. Amen and amen.